Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. So yesterday I actually recorded a really incredible reading for the new moon. It was so intense and there was one really strong theme that just kept replaying, kept repeating, kept coming up. And as I always do, once I finished the reading, I started uploading it onto YouTube and it can take a few hours to upload these videos onto YouTube. And I went about my day and when I came back, I spent some time with some beautiful people. When I came back home, I was just like, you know what? I actually just don't feel aligned to releasing that particular recording because all day I kept hearing this one message that kept coming through, this one theme that we're going to be going into today instead. And I was guided to basically delete that video and only use these two cards to open up this message and to kind of revisit the energy. So very, very strange. It's very rare that I don't sort of put up a reading that I have recorded because I feel like they're always very aligned. And while this reading was really aligned, it was super intense. It was one of the most intense readings I've had to channel. And it was actually really overwhelming to channel as well. Um, and there was a lot of fire coming through. And so I was guided to do this a little bit differently. And this is what we're going to be kind of working through. So I have no idea how this is going to be coming through today. And all I was told was to come on and do a reading based on this particular energy. But I do have the opening card that also came through for the reading because this was the energetic point of what we're going to be talking about. So the first card we had yesterday was Compass. And the message I got was finding true north, that this new moon energy is all about us connecting into what our truth is and not getting lost in the abyss of everything else, not getting lost in other people's ideas and, you know, energies and all of that kind of stuff. And it was very, very strongly going into finding your true north and knowing that your true north can be a little bit, you know, it can be a little bit rocky to get there. There's always going to be friction because we are being challenged to evolve and grow. So that was kind of the opening message with that. But the card that anchored the entire reading and that really, really showed up <laughs> and it even showed up during my day and I couldn't shake this energy and it was such an intense energy. The card itself doesn't necessarily hold the frequency of this, but the message is very, very clear. And even as I'm tuning into the energy now, I'm getting that same overwhelming feeling that I had yesterday, even though I've just been doing other readings without that kind of intensity. So this message has a strong intensity and I'm going to get into why and if the first card doesn't vibe with you then this reading will not be for you so the card that came through is the queen of wands and I was sitting in this energy yesterday with it I was like wow we've got the beautiful sunflower and then the energy of Sekhmet came through and some of the other really potent sort of goddesses but the message was very very clear about becoming the warrior of your life so that is the theme of this. This is where the energy was really guiding is how do you rise into becoming the warrior of your life? And a few years ago, a beautiful friend of mine drew an image of something that I had spoken about a lot. I've, sp I've spoke about this a few times throughout my journey. And it was that, yes, we can have this like warrior energy at the ready. But what it really came through as yesterday was that this warrior spirit that we have sometimes, our inner warrior, our warrior archetype, to me sits in the solar plexus energy. This is where it resides. And this is where we have our sovereign energy. So our sovereign and our warrior energy reside in the solar plexus, whereas some, you know, the other archetypes will obviously reside in other spaces. So, and that's just my personal opinion and journey with it. Some other people might have a different expression of that. But what it felt like was for many people is that our warrior has become exhausted, become defeated, has become almost afraid of battle in a way. And the message was really, really strong is when your back is against the wall, you have to learn to come out fighting. And so that's kind of where this energy was really taking is like, have you felt like your warrior is a little bit defeated, a little bit burnt out, a little bit sort of flat? And do you need that push to come out swinging, come out fighting, take charge of your warrior energy, not necessarily take charge of your life, but this was very focused on take charge of your inner warrior so you can actually become the version of you that you desire to be. And if you feel like you have been a little bit flat, a little bit depleted, maybe feeling a little bit defeated even, you still know how to become the warrior. And the imagery that came through for me um, a few years ago when this first sort of was landing 
was that it was like we're in this battle, we're in this epic battle and your warrior may be coming up against a tree and leaning up against a tree to catch their breath. It doesn't mean that they're defeated. They will still keep rising. They will, they will not surrender, but they might just be taking a pause. And the energy was all about how do we then store up all of our strength to come out fighting. If your back feels like it's been up against a wall in your journey, in your life, in some capacity, so what will it take for you to actually start rising into your sovereign warrior spirit? So that is what this Queen of Wands energy was all about. I was going to do this particular message face to camera because I felt like I knew there was going to be a lot of conversation, um, but I just actually couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I couldn't be bothered because when I do face to camera, I have to set up a lot more stuff and I have to do makeup and all that kind of stuff. And I just really didn't feel like it. So we're doing it this way. And... But just take it as more of a story journey versus a very, very, um, you know, clear, concise reading as to these, what the cards are saying. This felt like a very explorative journey to say, OK, well, what is your warrior feeling like? How are they wanting to be supported right now? Do you feel like you have sort of been up against the ropes? And it's like and the other message that I got yesterday, because I do actually have a warrior playlist on my um, like I have a lot of playlists that I work with. I love music. Music is a very, very important part of my personal journey. And when I was feeling it yesterday, it was like, if I could just send the energy, not necessarily the songs, but send the energy of that playlist to every single person that was listening to this reading, feeling that warrior spirit rising, reawakening, stepping back up and saying, yes, I am going to take ownership, take charge, come out as the warrior that I know that I am. That is my intention for you today, send you the energy that that playlist embodies into this reading. This might be the, the quirkiest reading I have ever done because <laughs> that's what it feels like. So we're going to get a couple messages around this energy of the warrior. So take away the, the need for it to be the queen of wands looking a certain way. If you are, you know, someone who does follow tarot and everything specifically, please just take it energetically today because... I definitely feel like the cards themselves are giving us a, an insight, like a layer of understanding, but the messages are so much clearer, so much stronger than what the actual cards may be. So we have the seventh chakra coming through, which is our crown chakra. So it does feel like for many, there is a level of awakening that is taking place right now, supporting them to actually step forward, step further into that warrior spirit. So it doesn't matter what part of your life feels like it has any point of defeat or any point of resistance, or maybe you have been journeying with something and it's almost like, oh, will I ever, will, will this ever manifest the way I want it to? Will this ever become what I was expecting it to be? You know, all of those energies are very tied into this frequency today. And this seven chakra to me is saying, it's almost like every block, every point of resistance where that warrior spirit is kind of feeling a little bit defeated, that pause before you come out swinging is here to support you to awaken to more as to why this is where you need to step into, why you are being challenged here. This pause is like, let's allow for more space for our awakening to, to really land and to open you up to new possibilities. So that particular message, you know, may not resonate for everybody, but it's definitely feeling like for the collective who have, who are in that embattled kind of warrior energy, it's like, you know, we might be down, but not defeated. That is how this feels. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big person, you know, <laughs> tell me I can't do something. I'm going to show you I can do it. Tell me that, you know, show me or say to me that I, I shouldn't be doing something or prove you wrong. You know, if you get me up against a wall, I will come out swinging. And, you know, it's like that, that energy of being, um, you know, an animal that gets backed into a wall. They will eventually sort of attack back. And we don't want to be attacking. That's not what this is all about. But when you feel like your back is up against the wall, you've been a little bit beaten down. So you might be like on the ropes. You've been a little bit beaten down. It's like storing up that strength and saying, Do you know what? 
I will rise and rise and rise again because nothing can defeat me unless I allow it to. That's really how this feels, which is why it's so strong with Sekhmet coming through because she is one of my power goddesses. And really focusing on Sekhmet's energy is that fire, internal passion, solar plexus, you know, going after those things is such a really strong Sekhmet vibe. So if you haven't worked with Sekhmet and you really want to sort of work on your warrior energy, by all means, have a look at sort of some stuff around Sekhmet's energy. She's an amazing goddess to work with. Um, there obviously are other warrior goddesses, but it's so energetically aligned to Sekhmet today. So that's kind of where we're taking this energy through. Let's see what else is coming through with this warrior spirit. We have integrity. The energy of integrity supports our choice to be consistently truthful and honest while being guided by high moral standards. So again, knowing, knowing when to fight and knowing when to put your swords away, I think is really important here. And standing up for what you believe in is one thing, but trying to sort of defend the energy I'm really feeling with that is like, you don't have to defend your choices. If you are in your truth, no one else needs to know why. No one else needs to have an opinion as to those choices. So for me, this really is about holding your integrity so strong and holding your own internal sort of compass really, really strong to say, I am directed to True North. I am focused on my soul mission. I may be down, but I am not defeated. I'm going to stay in my truth. I'm going to keep charging forward to what I desire. I'm going to keep showing up for my life. And I don't really give a shit what anybody else thinks about it. And that is such a powerful energy to be in when you really make a conscious choice, because it's hard, there, are, there will always be challenging times with that, where you make a conscious choice to not care about what someone else is thinking, what someone else is feeling towards you or towards what your purpose is, what your goals are. You know, one of the things I'm very conscious of is I don't share a lot of my, my ideas or insights or things I'm sort of planning until they're in full creation activation mode because it's like I don't want someone else's opinion on my journey I don't want your opinion I don't need it thank you very much but not today that's how I really feel with that kind of stuff and so sometimes it is just staying in your truth without anybody else needing to know what that looks like and until it's kind of like shock them you know, and this energy came through very strongly yesterday as well. It's like, shock them, show them who you are. And it's like, they will not see it coming kind of energy. That's how strong this energy is feeling. So again, this may not resonate for everybody because it feels like a very, very specific group of people that are going to say yes to this reading and say, this is what I am striving for, what I'm fighting for. Like, what are you fighting for? Let's see what else. I want to get two more of these. We have abundance. Are you fighting for abundance? Are you fighting for your Are you fighting for your passions and your purpose and your creations and but to me it's also an abundance in everything else and it's a it's an abundance of strength and it's an abundance of integrity and it's an abundance of joy and but I'm really feeling again that warrior energy. It's an abundance of that spirit that lives so strongly within we keep getting up no matter how many times you get knocked down. But I do feel for some that you are realigning yourself. If you can come in and connect your inner warrior, especially if you're doing something that is around abundance, that don't allow yourself to get down and defeated. Allow yourself to go, okay, I might have been at that ten of swords, but there is nothing that will prevent me from rising into my sovereignty, rising into what I know is true for me. And one more of these we have is the beautiful divine feminine energy. So this to me is a, you know, this is our energy of Shakti. This is our energy of really rising. Also the warrior energy. This isn't, doesn't mean masculine or feminine. This is a, a an energetic. The warrior archetype resides in a feminine chakra. So the lower chakra is a feminine. The upper chakra is a masculine. The heart is the meeting point, the center point. So that divine feminine energy is where the solar plexus, where our warrior archetype lies. So to be in that warrior archetype sometimes can be a little bit almost like we want to step into that masculine, but you can still be in that feminine frequency as a warrior. It doesn't mean you're going into sort of that, that I want to say, if you think about warriors in history, most warriors will be masculine embodied. 
this feels very much about honoring the feminine warrior within and Sekhmet comes in for that Durga comes in for that there are there are many of the goddesses that actually are warrior goddesses so this feels to me very much about honoring that feminine energy this talks about being soft and receptive and I think this can be where sometimes the feminine energy is misunderstood yes the feminine energy is soft and receptive and nurturing and intuitive and loving and compassionate and all those things but she is also fierce right the warrior and the sorceress energy and the creatrix energy all of those energies are actually feminine archetypes and they are fierce they are you know <laughs> They will not shrink back. They will stand up for what they believe in. They will stand up for their truth. They will stand up for their rights. This is for those who feel that strength within, that feel that push within or that pull within to say, yes, I am willing to rise into my warrior. I very rarely do this, but I have to. I want her back on top. <laughs> Queen of Wands, I want her back there. Okay. So take all of these messages as they resonate and connect for you because I know this is this might be a little bit of a, it's definitely a very different style of reading, but it feels very, very aligned to, okay, this is what we need to be working on right now. What else do we have? I want to get two of these. We have the energy of get wild. That has been coming through a little bit in different readings, connecting into that wild woman energy. That is our, our beautiful feminine nature as well, that wild woman archetype that rebel archetype really rising into your sovereign self, awakening those more wild, chaotic energies. Let's see what else. <laughs> then we have the sovereign. What did I just say? The wild sovereign self, right? The queen of wands is a sovereign energy. The warrior spirit is a sovereign energy. The sovereign and the warrior both reside in the same chakra system so and again take that as it connects because not everybody will believe that not everybody will gr agree with that everybody has a different feeling about that my personal journey with the archetypes and working with the amount of people i've worked with, with the archetypes that's my understanding comprehension feeling into it so take that as it connects for you because it won't be for everyone but to me the sovereign and the warrior exist at the same energetic level and when you rise in your warrior spirit, you are rising in your sovereignty at the same time and feeling into your self-confidence, your self-respect that all resides in that solar plexus energy. So definitely a lot of, um, a lot of, I want to say power in this energy today. If you feel like you have been really struggling, what will it take for you to connect into that archetype and say yes to your life again, to say yes, no matter how many times I get defeated, what is it going to take for me to continue in this pursuit of the dreams that I have? And I'm going to get, I'm feeling, I don't know why, but I'm feeling 10 of these cards. I never pulled that many, <laughs> that many at once, but I'm going to be pulling, I think 10 of these particular cards. So we have six of crystals. This is crossing the stormy seas, taking ownership. And, you know, yes, it could be travel, but it feels like I am willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to cross the seas in order to get to the life that I desire. I'm willing to come out swinging. I'm willing to, you know, I want to say to take the fight out, like from against the wall, from against the ropes. I'm willing to take the fight out. And fighting doesn't mean in a negative way. Fighting is just fighting for self, fighting for self-respect, self-boundaries, self-sovereignty. That's what I feel like this is fighting for, fighting for the life that you dream of. This is what it's about. We have the page of wands coming through. And this is such a beautiful, like passionate energy, new passions, new ideas, new insights coming through. But we need to stand firm in that sort of strong space so you can allow yourself to receive those new energetic codes, whatever that looks like. Okay. Because we are taking 10, I'm going to take the ones that fell out. No, I'm not. I'm being guided not to do that. Okay. Because I only normally take one. I only take a drop card if there's only one card. Otherwise, it's just a really bad shuffle on my part. Okay. Let's go. We have Seven of Crystals here. So this could be deceit. You know, maybe you felt like you've been deceived. Maybe you feel like you've been deceiving yourself. Maybe you feel like you have been lying to yourself to say, you know, maybe you've been repeating the same story over and over and over again of, is it going to get any better? I can't do this. This is too hard. All of those things feel like what that card is kind of bringing through. We have the five of wands, which could be, 
this internal conflict energy that I'm feeling. So this internal conflict of saying like, is this the right thing? Can I step into this? You know, is it ever going to change? Is anything going to be different? This is a mindset energy, but also, yes, mindset is important. But if you activate fully your Shakti, if you fully open up to that lower frequency energy and doesn't mean lower as in like lower frequencies in lower vibration. I mean the lower chakra energy, which is the Shakti. So that's where I'm talking about lower that frequency. If you can connect into that and you can start to illuminate, bring that up, it actually dissolves a lot of the blocks anyway, because it is a fully Kundalini dissolving transmuting energy. So that's how this really feels is like we, yes, we can work on mindset, but also Sometimes actually awakening that divine feminine frequency within. So mindset doesn't have such a strong hold on someone. We have the hermit energy coming through. So it might be you've been in isolation for a period of time and you have been sort of taking a little bit more time out for yourself to maybe you've needed the rest. This is also to me, the hermit is always an illuminating energy as well. It's like they are illuminating the pathway so you can see what you need to see. We have the Ten of Stars and this is a, a Ten of Pentacles energy. This is saying that, you know, what it is you desire, you've got to start illuminating the path. You can't stay in hermit mode and get to that Ten of um, Pentacles. You can't stay in hermit mode and receive the life that you desire. You have to be willing to take that action and start moving forward in some capacity. Clear out all those limiting beliefs and start rising in that warrior spirit. We have the Empress, the Queen of Queens coming through. She is our birthing creation. <sighs> it's like I can feel it's like I've got the whole world available inside of me. I just need to be willing to awaken it. That's how that energy is feeling today. We have seven of stars. You get what you, where you nurture. It's like you get the energy wherever you're nurturing, wherever you're putting your focus and attention, that is what you will get. So where is your focus? Where is your attention? Where is the energy pulling you right now? And the final one here is the six of stars, is that divine reciprocity energy to give and receive in equal measure. But it also feels like with this, it's like, are you willing to allow yourself to receive the guidance, the abundance, the joy, the awakening from the universe? Are you willing to allow yourself to open up to what is meant for you and receive that full activation? This feels like an activation energy. And as I said, I want to send you all the energy from my warrior playlist through this transmission to you to get you to feel it. Like if I could honestly, I should have done this face to camera because I can feel the intensity and you might have received it better because I know a lot of people much prefer that. And I'm a very animated reader as well. Like you can't see this behind the camera, but I'm an extremely animated reader. If you've ever seen me in ceremony, you'll know what I'm talking about because I talk with my whole body in my hands. But with this, I, I really just want to like drill home that point to say that this is up to you. This is your chance to say, okay, what is it? Where am I? How is my warrior feeling? Is my warrior feeling defeated? Is she or he... I'm saying she because it does always feel like a feminine energy because it's the lower feminine chakra. So don't take that with any sort of gendered energy. It's just to do with the energetics. But And I'm also a she. So for me, is she defeated? Is, is it feeling depleted? Do I have any fight left in me? Why am I feeling like I don't have any fight left in me? What would it take for me to rise into that? If you can connect into that energy, into that warrior spirit, things will begin to shift so drastically. Now, I did say I was going to take 10 cards and I've picked nine. And so I'm being told to take my 10. I was told 10. So one more card here. What are we going to be getting here for our... <laughs> okay. Okay. What do we have? We have the Nine of Swords. What an intense card to have as our final card there. This to me is our the point of, it's an anxiety card. It's definitely that point of almost defeat, but you're not defeated. This is how I'm reading this energy today is that you may feel like you're defeated, but imagine yourself at the Nine of Swords, not at the Ten of Swords. Ten of Swords is defeat. It feels like you have been defeated and now you've got to rise again. But this is almost like, 
you haven't quite been defeated. You still have everything you need within you. You just need to redirect your energy. You need to redirect your focus. Pull all of your reserved energy away from anything that is not serving you and your life and start pulling it into that warrior energy to say, I am going to take charge of my life, step all the way in and own this. I want to say a word, but I won't say it. <laughs> Because it's a little probably a bit, <laughs> have to be mindful of some of the, the words I choose. But it's like, come on, we've got to do this. We've got to activate this. You've got to start rising in that. So that is the message that's really strongly coming through here. Um, take it as it resonates and connects because I know it's going to be a little bit of a different um, message and energy for some people. But please always take it with the love that it is intended. These readings are always done with the absolute highest love I can possibly channel through for every single being that ever receives them. It's part of my soul's mission to help souls awaken. And I can't do that by playing the, the loving sort of, you know, soft, gentle reading. We can't awaken. We can't push. We can't trigger. We can't move in that energy. It's a very comforting, nurturing, compassionate, loving energy sometimes, but it doesn't necessarily move and activate. And my purpose, my sole purpose is to move and activate, to trigger, to activate, to align you back to your soul's highest truth. So sometimes these readings can come through a little bit differently, but I really do hope this supports you to step forward in your journey in whatever way that looks. If you feel like you want more guidance with this, by all means, you can book a session. All the details will be below. I have just launched a brand new reading style today, um, which I'm really, really excited about, which is a six month ahead um, reading. I don't do future predictions. This is about guidance and steps to actually manifest your dream life. So focusing on one, one or two or three specific areas of your life to say, this is what I desire to bring into my life. What are the steps I need to do to get it? So it's a very specific guidance focused reading to support people to actually move forward. And that has been coming through for a little while, but yesterday after receiving this Queen of Wands energy that we had, it was like, we've got to do this. We've got to start supporting people in a different way to actually take action steps to move them forward. So that's why that has been created. Everything else is always linked in the description box below, including all of the activations, all of the goddess activations and everything else to support you in your journey as you feel guided to. Sending you all so much love and I'll connect again soon.